Kitchen. And today we are going to make my first annual flower container of the season. But first, I'm gonna make some new um, hummingbird syrup for my hummingbird friends. I don't know if you're familiar with making syrup yet, but I figured I would show you in case you want a recipe. It's really simple, all you need is some sugar and some water. One part sugar, two four parts water. And so I like to make it in small batches because you're supposed to change the water or the syrup out frequently. Um, this time of year it's pretty cool out, it's still spring, so you can change it about twice a week. But as the weather warms up and it could have a tendency to build some bacteria, you certainly want to change it more frequently, maybe every two to three days. And so I took my beer down, I've washed all the pieces, and now I'm going to make some syrup so it can cool down and you can fill it. And while it cools off, we can work on the annual summer container. So here I go. I'm using a quarter cup measurement. So I'm going to fill one quarter cup of sugar. And then you just bring it to a low simmer, stirring frequently with a whisk. And you're just gonna melt the sugar. You don't wanna let it burn. So very low heat, low to medium. And when all the sugar is dissolved, your syrup is ready. All you have to do is let it cool off for about a half hour. So here's our syrup of just water and sugar. The sugar has all dissolved. I'm just gonna let it cool now. So I filled up my hummingbird feeder with my um, syrup that we just made and I told George that these guys come here all the time and he keeps missing it. So he put up the GoPro and we actually got the little guy coming in here for a few snacks. And um, yeah, I'm excited for him to see that they actually come pretty often because he was thinking I was a little bit obsessed, which I am. I love watching them when I'm doing the dishes. And so I'll insert that footage. There's my kitchen window, <laughs> and this is where the feeder is. So yeah, it's a great view, and I'm so happy when they come and visit. I absolutely love them. We're now ready to create our first summer containers of 2022. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm creating these planters specifically for my hummingbird friends. And I wore my red shirt for this video because there's that, I don't know if it's an old wives tale, a myth or what, but they say that they're attracted to red. And so I thought it would be appropriate to wear a red shirt and to create these summer containers for the hummingbirds. And I'm gonna create these, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these tulips out, they're a little past their prime now. I'm gonna save the bulbs for now until I decide what I wanna do with them. And we're gonna plant these up with these plants that I have here that I purchased on a recent plant sale. Um, and I will share with you what they are and which pot I'm gonna put them in. Here are the components I'm gonna use in my pots. So first I have this Rio Pink Mandevilla, and it has this really pretty cone shape where the hummingbirds can get their beak in there, so I think it would be um, really good to add to the container. Next, I have this uh, Heartland Sunrise Lantana, which is a really beautiful shade of pinks and almost has a little bit of an orange color and then a yellow center. So that is going in. And this plant here, which is called Cuphea Honeybells, um, another name for these is also cigar plant or firecracker plant. And they have these little cute cone-shaped um, or tubular flowers that are like a hot pink with yellow. And again, they will um, be conducive to the hummingbird getting their beak in there. And I think that once this fills out, it'll be really pretty. So these are the three plants that I'm going to use, and I'm going to split them among two containers. So I'm going to put the cigar plant or the cup here, which gets about 18 to 24 inches, supposedly. I'm going to put that in the biggest planter with the mandevilla in the back, and then I'm going to put the lantana, which should fill out this smaller pot by itself in that one. All right, let's do it. 
So I have some potting soil and some Osmocote, which is just an all-purpose fertilizer. It's a slow-release fertilizer. So I'm going to add this to the planter when I put the plants in. And the first thing I'm going to do is remove all of the bulbs from the pots. I'm going to place them in this grocery bag, this paper bag, and let them kind of hang out in my basement in a cool spot until I decide what to do with them. I'm either going to discard them or I will throw them in my vegetable garden um, in one of the raised beds in the fall and see what happens. Tulip bulbs, they sometimes perennialize, but other times, you know, they don't really come back. You might just get foliage. So they kind of, kind of they can be unreliable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to plant them in my um, vegetable garden. And if I get some, I get some. If not, then I can pull them up when I'm ready to plant next spring. I'm gonna cut these blooms off later, and I'm just gonna keep the bulbs in this bag. I'll discard of all of the stem and the foliage, and I'll only keep the lower part. I'll keep this bag open for a few days to let everything kind of dry out. And then I'll close it up and I'll stick it in a dark corner so that they don't start sprouting. Okay, so those are cleaned up. Now the potting mix in here is still good. Um, I don't change potting mix every time that I redo a container. I leave them in for a solid year sometimes too. What I do is just amend it. And amending just means add a little layer of fresh compost, throw in a little bit of slow release fertilizer like that Osmocote or even plant tone, um, anything you have on hand. And that will provide some nutrients in the pot for your plants. Okay. Soil is still nice and loose and good. Not too many roots, so perfectly good. No need for replacement. My plan is to put the Mandevilla, which these are a great alternative to petunias too. They are a tropical, so um, I sometimes in the summer get tired of watering, hand watering everything. Um, it's fun in the beginning and then by August the novelty wears off. So if I miss a day, these for, are very forgiving, um, you know, and so I, I really like mandevillas. And they go from this time of year, you know, in spring, early enough, it's still like mid-spring, until hard frost. So they're very, very hardy for a tropical. So to get your plants out, you know, sometimes they're a little root bound from being stuck in this container for so long. If you just squeeze the plastic, it kind of helps loosen things up and then they slide right out. You want to tickle your roots a little bit just to kind of loosen them up. This is nice and healthy. Sometimes you'll see them where they're start, starting to wind around and that's what's called root bound and you want to break that up. Okay, so what I was saying is I want to place this one towards the back of the container because I'm going to place it and I'll show you the placement after um, along a post and I'm going to maybe even try sticking some bamboo sticks to see if it trains upward and so I'm going to put it towards the back to kind of train it like a climber. I don't know how that's going to work out but we'll see. Kind of just test fitting and that looks about right. I don't usually measure this, I just kind of sprinkle it in. All right, so that's where that's going. And the capilla, which I'm gonna use as the filler of this container, and hopefully it spills over a bit, I'm gonna place right in front of the mandevilla. Now when you build containers, there's usually, you know, um, a rule that people like to go by, the thriller, the filler, and the spiller. So your thriller is the tall plant in the middle. A lot of people use those spikes. The filler would be something like this that will kind of fill the bulk of the container. And then the spiller is something that you put in the front that will kind of cascade over the pot. In this case, I am just going to have a filler and we'll call this the thriller. So my cup here is going to be the the uh, filler. And I'm hoping that this will fill this container at the bottom and I'm going to try to train this going upward, the mandevilla. So I'm just taking some all-purpose potting mix and I'm going to fill in around the plants.
I meant to put down some newspaper to not make a huge mess, but I forgot. So we'll have to use the leaf blower to clean things up. Okay, so here's the lantana. Here's a trick you can make if you want to know how big of a hole um, you need for your plant. You can just stick it in the middle. Stick the container in the middle of your pot. Kind of press it in. You're just making a mold, kind of like a template. And so now we have a perfect spot to place our plant. Again, loosen up your roots. And you just place it right in. See that? Like a dream. I need a little bit more topsoil or potting soil rather. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that and some stakes to make a trellis for the mandevilla. I went and grabbed these bamboo sticks in my garden um, and I'm going to make a trellis for the mandevilla with it. So I'm just going to take these three and I'm going to stick them along the back side of this planter, kind of evenly spaced. And I'm sure that if it's happy and it starts climbing, it's going to be taller than this, um, than these stakes. But I'll worry about that then. I can, you know, always add something, um, you know, maybe even put some wire, fishing wire up the post to kind of keep training it. I hope it at least gets to the top of this. But we will see. And I have this twine that you can always um, sort of intertwine between your bamboo sticks to kind of give the mandevilla something to hold on to. I have to actually go find my roll of this, but for now I can at least get a little bit of it going. A little bit of something that we can start kind of training it on and letting it grow. So a couple weeks ago when I put this feeder out, the last week of April or so, I wasn't seeing any hummingbird activity and I was getting a little worried, they weren't coming to visit. So I Googled and I said, well, how can I get the hummingbirds to find my feeder? Typically what you notice is that hummingbird feeders are red or that they have red um, nectar in them. And because I made, make mine with just sugar and water, it's clear, so I was afraid they couldn't see the feeder. So I Googled and what it said is to tie a red or orange ribbon around the tree or whatever kind of post you have near your feeder and the hummingbirds are going to be curious about the bright red color. So I think that is what the thing is behind the red, is that the color attracts them or catches their attention. And so I took this, this is a resistance band, um, and since I wasn't using it for its intended purposes, I used it to attract the hummingbirds. So all I did was take it and tie it around this post on my porch. I left it here for like two days, and the hummingbirds showed up. So it definitely works for me. So if you're having trouble getting the hummingbirds to your yard, try something like this, a red or orange ribbon around a tree or their post, and maybe they'll come. The last step is just to water them in. I always wait until I place my pots before I water them so that they're not too heavy to move around. Um, but here they are. These are my first containers of the summer and I am really happy with how they turned out. In a few weeks they'll start filling out beautifully and hopefully the hummingbird will go there for a drink and come here for a snack. At the end of this video I'm going to tack on a segment that I did when I received some plants from an organization called Gardens for Wildlife and if you want to check that out take a look. It's a company that curates a set of native plants specific to your zone that are supposed to attract pollinators and wildlife to your garden. So if you want to check that out, stick around and I'll catch you in the next one. Hi, it's Steph. And if you've been around for a little while, you know that in my earlier videos, I was back in my basement doing some footage because it was too cold out in my zone 6B. So here I am, unfortunately, in the spring back in my basement because it's freezing out and it's been windy for four days. Um, so I wanted to share something with you today. 
Um, over on Instagram, I'm pretty active over there. Um, so if you don't follow me on Instagram, you can go over and give me a follow. I have the link in the description box. But this company reached out to me and it's called Gardens for Wildlife. And they are this organization that what they do is they curate um, native plants and, uh, and you can buy them in sets. So these curated collections, you would put in your zip code and they would be specific to your area. And then you can further narrow it down by whether you have a sun, shade, or part shade, part sun situation. And they will give you suggestions on groupings of plants that, like I said, that come in a collection that you can purchase and plant in your garden. The purpose of this organization is to um, provide native plants for pollinators and for wildlife which we all know is really important for our environment and to keep the cycle of life going. So um, I'm going to open this box. I actually already kind of broke the seal, but I haven't taken anything out yet so that um, we can kind of see together what's in here. So what they did is when they reached out to me, they asked if I would be interested in getting some. And of course I was because I have a pollinator garden right outside of my vegetable garden. And um, there's a corner that's actually part shade because it gets shaded by some of the trees once the canopy fills in. So I picked a specific part shade combination um, that is native to my area in Massachusetts, zone 6B in the Northeast. And so I will show you the plants that I chose and that they were so kind to send out to me for my pollinator garden. So I guess we call this an unboxing. Is that what we're doing? All right, let's do it. Dun, 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 dun. This is pretty fun unbox unboxing. Anytime you unbox plants, it's always fun. So there is some paperwork that comes in the box. And there's a nursery stock plant health certificate. The origin of these plants were from Wisconsin. Oh, and you get these little stickers that says plant with a purpose, um, plant for the planet, Plant native plants so garden for wildlife so if you are interested check out that organization check out their website to purchase um, native plants for the pollinators for your garden so let's take a look so this is a collection of six plants and I have two sets of the same and so here are the selections that I chose they come well packaged so this plastic packaging um, helps the plants, you know, stay safe during shipping so that they don't get crushed or damaged. So the first plant is a cardinal flower, Lubelia cardinalis, and it's a native perennial. It blooms July through October. The light exposure is sun or part shade. They get two to four tall and one to two wide, and it likes moist soil. And they're hardy in zones three through nine. So really versatile and looks really good. The foliage looks really healthy. So that's good. And so I received two of these. So there's one here and there's another there. So it's a set of six plants, three plants, two of each plant. This one here is a big leaf aster and it blooms September through October. The light is sun or part shade. It gets one to two feet tall, two to four wide. And it also um, is versatile in terms of soil moisture. It can handle dry or moist. Another healthy plant. So that is the big leaf aster. And here we have great blue lobelia. And this one here it blooms July through September. The light exposure is sun part shade or shade. It gets one to two feet tall and one to one and a half wide. And the soil moisture is moist or wet soil and zones three through eight. So what I noticed is that the um, bloom times in these span from July through fall. So these are all going to be summer through fall blooms. And um, I, I really think that this is going to be a pretty combination. So this is a red. These have like white blooms and these have a, a light purple bloom. So I think that these will be a beautiful addition to my pollinator garden and I'm very excited to get these planted. 
So this is my pollinator bed. It's right outside of my vegetable garden. And I added this a couple of years ago just to bring more pollinators to the area. I was finding I was having a problem with fruit production in terms of my cucumbers and squashes. And so this was an effort to bring more pollinators to this area. So where I'm gonna plant these plants, these um, park shade plants, is right in this corner here because they start getting shaded by the trees to my right. 